To become invincible under the sun. What will it take? I don't know, but I recently read through the second volume of Vagabond and this is how it went. Chapter 32. This chapter is a nice reminder of pretty much everything. Apparently Matahachi in the previous section had carried Musashi over to an area so that he could get healed. Matahachi and Musashi still haven't officially interacted yet, which is kind of good because Musashi cannot stop thinking about Otsu, which is wild. Um, he's in love with her man. Otsu isn't around. She's actually working as a servant. Takwan is back. We also get this kid named Jotaro, which is, uh, for all those Jojo fans out there, you're getting some representation right now in this manga. Chapter 33. Now, it's pretty cool seeing where all the dojo members are going. They're all splitting off into their own little subplots, and I just really like this. We're 33 chapters in, and we have so many fire subplots, the story could definitely follow. Speaking of, there's this new guy named Gion who is going to go go after Musashi and kill him. So that's plus one to our subplot counter. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Chapter 34, Jotaro is following Musashi and Musashi pretty much tells him to kindly fuck off. <laughs> Which, you know, don't feel too bad, little guy, because honestly, he also didn't allow Otsu to come along and he's like in love with Otsu, so that sucks for you but it's crazy now we're like setting up a love triangle because matahachi is also thinking about otsu at this time what's gonna happen chapter 35 just a whole lot more of really nailing in the point that he just cannot stop thinking about otsu matahachi's mom is after the trio she is pissed about two of them and also wants to beat the shit out of her son for becoming a criminal and i would like to move forward but now i want to take a second to just go over this fire ass quote you carry everything right here preoccupied with a single leaf you won't see the tree preoccupied with a single tree and you'll miss the entire forest. Don't be preoccupied with a single spot. See everything in its entirety, effortlessly. That is what it means to truly see. Dude, that is so fucking cool. It seems like the sequence really, really had an effect on Musashi because he finds that Jotaro kid and he's like, you know what? Part four is actually my favorite JoJo part. I think I want you to come along. So yeah, now we got plus one to our members, except Takwan just left. So we're just kind of evening it out right now. Chapter 37 is jaw dropping. Honestly, for this panel alone, I saw this shit and I was just like, it's so cool. Something else that I really liked in this chapter was this bloodlust vision. I just thought this was really fascinating and everything around this whole section was just super cool. Because in chapter 38, we get to see this Thorfinn-esque storyline. Which one of you fuckers fucks with my boy Thorfinn? Love that guy. Vinland Saga, great series, go check it out. But pretty much the old man is trying to explain to him that his bloodlust is like a mirror. Pretty much whatever he outputs is what he's gonna get back. So. He should have no enemies. That's not really what they're trying to say, but that's what it felt like. Chapter 39, earth, fire, water, air. These four elements lived in harmony until holy fuck, this character looks like Aang and it's really cool. His mannerisms and his childlike energy. He's a monk, he's bald, he's jumping around on people, he uses a spear. There's probably no connection there, but it feels like there is one. I just really like this character introduction and he is on the cover of the manga. So he's definitely important. I also want to point out in this chapter, Musashi and the old man get drunk and talk about what it means for somebody, for an individual to be strong. Now, thankfully, I actually know what it means to be strong and I'll break it down for you real quick. See, each letter has a meaning. Uh, so starting off with S, you got subscribe and the rest of the trong, that shit doesn't matter. Help me get to 1,300 subscribers. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna move forward. I just needed to throw that in there. Chapter 40, Aegon versus Musashi is dope as hell. I really like this fight. This this just solid one punch panel is just, it's like, it's just so beautiful. I just love it. I love it so much. I love that the story doesn't have any anime power-ups and it's just raw, just blood, sweat, and tears. That's what these characters are fighting for. It's so 
refreshing. So glad Musashi doesn't go Super Saiyan. Chapter 41, Gion versus Musashi. I'm kind of surprised that this is happening this soon. I feel like we haven't had time to breathe and we also don't really know who this Gion guy is, but uh, the fight's not even that extravagant because it gets interrupted. In chapter 42, this Aang slash Inshun guy is like, he looks incredibly strong. And also this old man, I'm starting to think, was this the dude was he the guy who used to run this dojo? Is he the strongest one? The answer is yes, but I didn't know that at the time. Chapter 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, and 49. This chunk of chapters is dedicated to the entire Inshun versus Musashi fight. Super entertaining fight, probably my favorite one in the series so far. If anybody has been reading Vagabond and hasn't gotten hooked, if anything was going to, I feel like this fight would be the thing that does. It's really entertaining. And they also have a Spider-Man 3 reference with this moment right here. I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. Shit is, shit is awesome. Chapter 50 and 51. This is the after the battle climax, the healing moment. This is when you find out that Musashi actually lost and he ran away from the battle. Jotaro was like, dude, I didn't know you were a bitch and dipped. But something unexpected happened in these two chapters that I just didn't expect. Words. The old man actually wants to help Musashi beat Inshun in the rematch, which is like, what? What? That's so cool. Chapter 52, 53, 54. Now I could go on to explain this, but I just want to say, if I focus on this leaf, I can never see the whole tree. If Musashi focuses on himself in battle, he will never see the flaw in his enemy. Sun Zhao, the art of the art of power and war. War book. Chapter 55, 56, 57, 58. Now I could do this whole song and dance that I've already been doing explaining all this, but I just kind of want to directly read what I have written down right off of my laptop. These are, and I'm not joking, are my actual notes for this section in the story. Welcome to the Matahachi is a fuck up show. Today on the menu, we have get a nice samurai killed. Dedicate your time to returning his belongings to the family. Spend the money and the belongings on personal interest instead. Become full of regrets. Commit identity theft. Get scammed. Kill a man, gloat about it, and have sex. Matahachi is just, like, phenomenal. The fact that he can just do so sh much shit in just a short amount of time, it's just like, he honestly... I don't know. He feels like a family guy cutaway gag, man. Like, are we seriously? Is this seriously a part of the narrative? I feel bad. Uh, it's like, it's, I know, I don't know if this is the purpose, but seeing these sections makes you just like Musashi a lot more and lose respect for Matahachi. But then when you think about it, like, is your life more like Matahachi's or is it more like Musashi's? And that's when you just think, damn. I need to get my shit together. But now we are on chapter 59. Inshun, after the battle, he has been like thinking about his life and he's just lost the spirit, the excitement, the drive, the fire inside of him to fight. He does not care anymore because nothing has been as thrilling as that battle with Musashi. So what else is there to do that holy fucking shit what else is there to do but to go and fight musashi and that's what he's gonna go do and that's where the fucking volume ends that is three more volumes that we have covered that was the entirety bulk second volume of vega i will be honest i went on and read like the next two chapters after that i stopped i'm saving myself we'll be coming out with the third one in the next week or two so stay tuned for that i don't know if any of you guys are actually reading along side with me that would be sick let me know in the comments below but man i really like this story uh this shit was cool and i just feel like it's gonna keep getting better and i can't wait to see how it ends why, do, why don't manga creators finish their stories? Anyway, now I'm gonna show you a montage of grass and trees because I have a lot of footage in the forest that I just haven't used. See you later, guys. Subscribe, like, and that's that's been me. Adios.